is due. Uh, but <laughs> Sorry, Shiva, like my a... bad. No, it's okay. It was a good point to make because I made it too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Marana picked up when we talked about it. Cancel yeah. plays a mean Marana. Yep. Even the games that they lost where... Like, Cancel played Murano four times, two wins, two losses. He's, even the games that they lost, he was actually doing really well before. This, this pick is very good over. for Call because they pick the hero on two rows. So when you open a drop, you want to have heroes that can fit in, in multiple positions right. for your team because Zifrik plays the hero as well. And he's one of the like good mid heroes to deal with the Shadow Demon Illusion spams as well with the Aghanims. So like, all in all, like pretty good pickup here for Call. And they removed the Tinker, which is also, also one of the Nana's uh, favorite heroes. Like Tinker, Storm, he likes to play those heroes. Tinker and Alchemist have both been taken away by Complexity. No more of that Alchemist game. Yeah, they, they don't want to play like a drawn out. Like in the game that they beat uh, Wings, they played a very drawn out game. Like Tinker plus Luna as well. Like the game went till very late and they had very, very good late game. And it became very difficult for Wings to deal with them. But Wings in the end still won the game. But I, I think they won because they were the better team. But they didn't have the better mm. strategy in the late game. And there's the Spirit Breaker again. It's back. Mm, this it is, is like back. their offlane hero, right, Ben? Like uh, Z-Freak played it as well. Monkeys played it once and Z-Freak played it once. So... Z-Freak actually has played only different heroes the entire event so far. Oh, so their, hero, their heroes, heroes are basically very open. Mirana and SB are played by multiple players on their team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't everyone very impressed by Z-Freak's Rubik? Was that the one that really turned heads the most? Yeah, yeah. Z-Freak's Rubik, Z-Freak's Z everything. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's yeah. definitely, yeah. I think, in my opinion, their best player on the team. He's really, really good. Yeah. Would you not say, though, that um, it is going to be a cancel Marana, considering the OD is already banned and cancel plays? A lot of Marana. A lot of Marana. Yeah, it's still pretty <laughs> open, though. But then yeah. again, it's really good to have, uh, if you have some off-lane off SB yeah. and you have a mid Marana, it's easy to set up kills, charge into arrow. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure on, on the mid laner. They might need like a mid laner that's like uh, more difficult to kill. Like someone that has maybe escape or very, very tanky. Okay. Alright, well with the uh, Luna and Shadow Demon, I guess that's something that Complexity can really prepare for because that is such an obvious combination to go for. Still, so... Complexity has something in mind. I'm curious to see what Warrior Gaming has in mind. Because how can you how you can you prepare for the draft that Complexity has so far? You win the laning phase really hard. I think yeah. that Spirit Breaker yeah. is kind of weak as a support, mm. uh, even weak as an off laner, and the Winter Wyvern is especially weak as a support. So you need to make sure that you don't give free kills to the Spirit Breaker Marana. And then once you do that, you'll buy time for your Luna to get big. Timbersaw, one of the better illusion clearing heroes. It's on the side of Warriors Gaming, solid still later overall, just uh, open for them as well. They could put him off lane, they could put him mid, but most mostly they play it is hero mid on Nana. Nana's taking Saw? Yeah, okay. very very likely, but it's still possible that they do it like uh, off lane with plus one, like Timber plus one off lane. Mm. Like Warriors uh, Gaming are also a team that prioritize a lot on winning their lanes. They want to have a good time in their laning phase and Call right now have a little weak lanes because of the Wyvern pick. Couldn't they just dark seer and just kind of win most of their lanes though, and have better team fight? I'd be scared of that personally. Yeah, that too. But Timber is like really good uh, because uh, it allows you the flexibility. You can still put him mid or off lane. Whereas mm -hmm. if you draft the dark seer, he pretty much has only one way to to go. But you have to put him on the off lane. So less predictability by picking Timber Saw. Yeah. Uh, yes. So you have uh, much more options. You know, you have right. a lot of uh, things that you can change. You can be responsive. Yes, uh, whereas for Call right now, they are pretty much on the egg being very aggressive uh, page with uh, those three picks. They're going to put a lot of pressure. If we're going to assume that the heroes are Cancel and Monkey's heroes, mm -hmm. effectively Mirana sure. and Spirit Breaker, uh, what would you like to see from Mu? If, if you're going to have a lane with the Winter Wyvern supporting you, mm, is there, like, we've, we've seen him play Weaver know. a lot as well. I like Ursa though, like they're on Dire side, they can maybe use that and Ursa mm -hmm. fits the bill of like Running Another. around. They are going color code. This, this guys. is like. I'm very wait, happy this is, with this. Uh, wait, is this a core lash, uh, Ben? Uh, Swindles has been playing lash. But then that's a wyvern. Yeah. So. Mm, I think core. Core lash. Mm. I think he, if he's farmed enough, he can actually deal with the illusions. I think Lush is actually an excellent illusion yeah, player. Yeah, and, and it's very good against uh, Timber Saw because against Timber, you don't want to build uh, physical. You, you want to spell hero. So you force the Timber to get maybe an early hood. You get an early hood to deal with it. So you can't really get your Bloodstone earlier and snowball from there. Mm. I'm going to be really upset if Complexity choose someone that's not blue. Yeah, their, their heroes are... <laughs> I need another blue hero, please. But still, their heroes are really open and they, they could still lane this multiple ways, play in different roles. And for Warriors, it's pretty much easier to guess what they're trying to do. Okay. 
for your sake. Uh, Alex, I think uh, maybe a Sven would be in order. I mean, yes, that would be complete. It the would set. mean that it's not a Corlys Shrak, but at least it's blue, you know? And you got something to pair off. That's what I'm here with, for, so. the top tier analysis. Make it blue, please. How, well, what, uh, warriors, are, on the other hand, they might want a green hero <laughs> or spirit. I know they like to play okay. the hero. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty good at dealing with the Winter Wyvern, because in the team fights, when you're focusing one target, you don't want him to save the other target, so you can silence him. Mm. But this is also one of our. Uh, the heroes that they like to play a lot, uh, Conquer, just uh, very old school things with uh, SD Luna Conquer. We don't see that a lot anymore nowadays because the combo has been significantly nerfed. The Torrent, you don't deal so much damage now. But still, it's pretty good in team fights with uh, the Luna. You have the Bolt and the Eclipse. Uh, you can negate a lot of the damage coming from, say, a core less right. So be this is good. a lineup that Spirit Breaker doesn't really want to charge into. I feel like yeah. you're just going to die. <laughs> Spirit Breaker, Conquer, Timber, Soul, Luna. You, yeah. you run in, there's a bow, there's a walling death. Yeah. It's not a fun game for SB if you don't have a BKB. Does that mean he's more likely to be support? To but then again, look at their hero so If he's support, then yeah, I guess they can still do it. But if but he's support, gonna be, he's never going to get a BKB. No, if he's support, then Lash is going to be like, what, carry, like, safe lane and then Mirana maybe. Okay. Or off lane. Yeah. It's like a bit weird, though. I don't know. It is fun that we are this far through the draft and still not sure yeah, where yeah. everything's going. It, it is really the the thing with Call's lineup. You really do not know yeah. how they're going to lane this and how they're going to put their roles. And once again, Call banning out all the Nana heroes, the Tinker and Storm. Now putting in two of his best heroes. I'm still waiting for that uh, the yeah, mid hero yeah. to come they out. They are expecting the Timber to be off lane Timber. That's yeah. why they ban out the Storm. But I still think that the Timber could still go mid depending on matchup. Maybe they were that if we pick Lash and the enemy team might think we are laning Lash mid and Timber mm. doesn't do very well against Lash so they're expecting the Timber to be an off lane Timber. We should address this now Ben. Lash Rack is, is starting to be picked more and more in this draft. It was, I remember just when we were doing the complexity desk, oh Lash Rack, that's rare, it's very unique to complexity. In fact in the Slacks interview they said, oh we pick it because it's similar to a hero from a different game and we liked it. That was literally their explanation, it has a stun and does damage. That was their summary. It's good in the lane, I think the hero is really good in the lane and he provides one thing that most of the position 5 supports do not do. What's that? He pushes towers. N none of the position 5 supports do that. They are mostly either like Dazzle, they, they heal you or they have like AoE ultimate like a disruptor, but sure. none of them actually push down towers. It allows you to snowball and play faster. In this meta, we always talk about if you play fast, you put the enemy on pressure, it's really good for your team. And it also, they, they've also tried the other ones, like I say, Shadow Shaman, which Cross we still lose. And that's, we... a, that's an Omni Knight, by the way, Ben. Yep, I saw Omni. Uh, that's a good uh, way to deal with the Winter Wyvern ultimate, because when he curses your mm -hmm. teammates, you can pop the gear and you negate all the damage coming from that. But how are you going to lane it? Uh, it's an off lane Omni Knight. Okay. And Timber is going to be mid. Which is what you, you suspected at the start, yeah, right? Yeah, Timber, mid Timber. And uh, WG Unity banned out the Juggernaut, so they were still expecting a core. And it is a Weaver. Is that is that in blue That's enough? That's blue enough for me. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've won me over. Complexity, yes. Good. Yeah, that was it. My <laughs> prediction is justified because they've gone full blue, just like you. Woo. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a poet, <laughs> and I didn't know. But it. I'm also happy. I see that. I see the draft now. I'm happy with my predictions. Oh, no. to the Warriors draft. Hey, you're happy with that one. Yeah. The, was it the mystery? What was it that, that sold you? I, I just like their overall drafting, okay. the, the whole package, you know, having the team fight heroes. Okay, so we expect big team fights from Warriors. It's going to be a bit of a battle there. Complexity are the favorites of the desk. We'll see what the casters have to say about this one because our draft is done. It's our third series of the day. We've already waved goodbye to two teams, both Wings and IGV. And now to find out who our third on the chopping block is, it's your casters. It's none other than OD and Gods to guide you through this battle. Thank you very much, Alex and D. We're getting ready for it here in the theatre. Complexity Gaming going up against Warriors Gaming. I'm Odie Pixel, I'm here with Gods. We've seen the draft, and Gods, as you pointed out, Complexity with a sort of bleed blue strat here with their picks. It's all blue. What's going on, Gods? Not sure, you haven't got the memo. This is the wrong team for the blue strat, but it's definitely a team that is in red hot form when it comes to Complexity. Their dismantling of EG and the group stages put them on the highs, put them on the radar for a lot of Dota 2 viewers out there, and they are. Uh, Team to look out for in the main event, and probably pretty happy with the matchup they got. WG Unity, they uh, upset Wings, but ended up not looking dominant in their group. They got beaten pretty badly by DC, so definitely agreeing with the overall panel where Complexity come in as favorites.
I mean, these drafts are it, 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 very, very interesting things to see. Complexity first picking up that Wyvern as they as they talked about in this finisher. Getting Mu on that position one Weaver. In terms of lanes, though, what do you expect we're going to see? Because there's a lot of flexibility from both sides here, isn't there, Gods? Yeah, looking, I guess the question is, do you, does either team want to go for the aggressive lane? But so far, it looks like Kang is going to the offlane on the Omni Knight. Uh, and it's going to be the offlane of Monkeys on the Spirit Breaker. So no aggro trial lanes. The big difference in the two offlane is Spirit Breaker can get active early. We saw Monkeys play uh, some very weird offlaners like a Bounty Hunter in one of their games. He wants to gank, he wants to roam around. For Warriors Gaming, Omni Knight, he doesn't roam. He sits in the lane, he leeches XP. He comes online much later than the Spirit Breaker does. Oh, we'll see at the start. I mean, both teams are having a few members down towards the bottom rune, but... Complexity actually looking like they might dual lane down bottom. They've got Z Freak with a Null Talisman. Theoretically, he could look to partner up with the Spirit Breaker and pose a threat to the Lunar's laning stage. I would at least tie the Kunker a bit more to that bottom lane, but we'll see if that's going to be the plan. Z Freak already heading towards the top lane now. All right, so this mid lane matchup, Cancel on Marana up against, uh, of course, Nana's Timbersaw. Oh, do we expect to see a hero kind of run away with this lane, or is it just going to be a, a case of even trade with the farm? Pretty even trade. Marana's right click damage doesn't really harass or zone a Timber very much. Uh, Timber just stacks up the reactive arming, armor, so there's no way to really zone him. We'll see a, a very even matchup between the two. If anything, maybe even ever so slightly Timber favored, at least initially, with all the uh, reactive armor he can get. Bottom lane, we can see uh, uh, Monkey's just hiding in the trees as you're trying to sap XP. Uh, but this dual lane's at the moment coming up from WG Unity against this 3 1 1 from Complexity. Yeah, this bottom lane's kind of lost their creep equilibrium. The, the range creep's already died on the die side, which means it's going to push out. So they'll be for forced to either do a side pull here or they're going to be giving Monkey's a lot of XP. It looks like Monkey's should be in for a pretty good time as far as being able to get some XP out of this lane. Already going up on uh, Shadow Demon. It's getting a bit aggressive at this bottom lane. Oh, got the disruption. Oh, I this around there. Yeah, simply just trying to force monkeys away from it. Top lane, meanwhile, though, Colette Flexi moving in with the tri lane. Kangaroo falling incredibly low. They'll look to chase him out. He's trying to juke it, but he's already used his spells. And Swindley Malone's will take first blood, bringing down Kangaroo. Yeah, he's not on the last track we've been seeing. That's in Z Freak's hands, but. Still on point with the Winter Wipe, an immediate TP back. There is a lot of experience waiting for them in this top lane, but that's something Swindles is already looking to deny with that side pull. And that's three range creeps. That's a lot of XP, those range creeps. You don't want to lose those as an offlaner, but damage has been done, and it looks like Kang is going to struggle to get as much XP as he'd like out of this lane. And we can see already Z-Freak just maximizing efficiency, getting the stacks done. We'll be under the watchful eyes with that Radiant Observer ward, though, so Warriors Gaming are going to know what's going on. Yeah, because of the stack, he gets the rune late, so it will go the way of the Kunker, but just an illusion rune, not something Kunker can make too many plays off of. Top lane again, just a lot of harassment onto Kang, trying to minimize the, the experience that he's able to gain from this offlane. And talking about offlanes, down on the bottom, uh, over to the side of, of Complexity Monkeys, again, level 3, not finding a lot of CS, looks like he's having trouble getting close and personal with this, this SD Lunar lane, and now with the pools, Warriors Gaming able to secure a little bit of a better momentum to make sure that Arjit has the safety to get that farm he needs. Level 3 is a lot for an offlaner this early on, and that's, I think, partly why they want to rotate Lesh down here. They feel they can get kills. Z3, oh, not able to quite get in range there for the follow-up stun, and now Warriors Gaming just turning to fend him back off. Z3, we'll see how much he wants to hang around down here. I mean, how much can this Lesh get it done? Can he rotate towards the mid and look towards Nana, or is that just a gank that's not worth using resources for at this stage? Probably lacking the damage to get that kill. Cancel has gone for the double arrow star, so hasn't got any points in the leap, so they have got a bit more damage output, but he's going to be stronger paired with the Spirit Breaker. Shadow Demons and Luna both very squishy in this lane. There is the potential disruption save, but disruption could also set the split out, so you've got to be very careful about how you use that spell. Lane again, though. A bit of a skirmish going on between the two. Afu and Mu both falling low. Mu starting to sell, but they can't get anything to tick it off, and it's going to be Complexity taking down one. Now look towards Kang as well, but with the purification, it will be enough to land to walk off, but this top lane is kind of all falling apart here for Warriors Gaming, giving away two kills already in the first three and a half minutes to Complexity. Yeah, really nicely played. The coordination between Swindles and Moo is on point so far. They've gotten two kills up here, and WG's offlane is just kind of struggling here. Omni Knight has managed to hit level four, so it's not really hurting their overall strategy too much, uh, but it is giving Complexity a lot more than you're perhaps hoping for with Moo already off to a, a good start, 18 CS, and helping out in two of those kills. Now, you see the overall CS is three 
green numbers up there, all CSing well. So I think you, overall, WG Uni can't be too upset with this lane stage despite the kills they've given up. Absolutely. That mid lane matchup, 23 to 4 against the 12 for 3. That's uh, an absolute win at the moment for Nana. They need to do something about it. They have brought Z Freak across. He's got an arcane rune, so we'll see if he's able to get hero. a couple of stuns yeah. out potentially. I think without a third hero, this is just it's not hard. a viable kill. He's already got the 15 stacks. If he's starting with zero, you can go for it, but a third, potentially fourth hero is needed. Winter Wyvern is yeah. coming from the top room with a smoke. As, he's got a, an infused raindrop as well. It's such a hard yeah. hero to gang. Bringing in number four, it's a Spirit Breaker charge. <laughs> They're committing everything for this one. They need to make it work. Complexity Monkeys to lead the way. Overfly Swindles, they'll get the follow-up stun from Zebra. Looking for the arrow, they do get the connection, and with that, they should find the kill. It's a hard one, but they do get it done. Complexity committing four, but it's the right call to to make as they crush the mid who was already crushing cancel doubling the cs of that marana they needed to shut him down yeah great call from captain swindles there making the solo smoke rotation but he already had the two heroes coming in from bottom so completely catches timbersaw by surprise and that is a much needed kill because of that yep. cs discrepancy you're talking about does free up that mid lane a bit for Cancel to catch up a little bit he even goes back to the jungle to get an arrow off so really nicely played there up on the top lane, at the moment, Arfu just hiding in the trees, Swindles will spawn him out. And it looks like Complexity are going to try and make a little bit of a go, the Splinter Blast are going to quite clip onto Arfu as Swindles just continues to whistle down that stack that he's got created by the side pull. And at the moment, as you said, even though the kills are going the way of Complexity farm-wise, the, the edge certainly is still there for, for the side of Warriors Gaming. Yeah, a lot of Radiant Vision though scouts out the aggression of Z-Freak and Monkeys down here. They should know fairly well where they're positioned down here. So WG Uni shouldn't be getting caught by a surprise. Shadow Demon is ready to defensively disrupt as needed. We'll see if uh, any of these runes are going to be, be huge in terms of play. There's a haste rune up top. I want to look to get it yet, but this could paramount for the side of complexity to continue to find another kill, which they, they need to do. Losing the farm game at the moment, they need to find something in return. And mid lane, that's going to be potentially where they have their eyes on again. Monkey's already moving into position. Be careful about the aggression now. Luna's hit level 6, so there's that potential for a TP in with Eclipse. It's a, one of the probably big ways for Double G Uni to turn around some of these ganks that uh, Complexity seem to be very keen to kind of set the tempo early with the rotations. We've seen the Winter Wyvern move Spirit Breakers, hit level 5, so he's ready to get active. And again at top, trying to chase down Kang, but as you said, even though he goes down the first few times, because he's still got that XP and he's nearly reaching onto level 6, it's becoming a very hard hero for just the Weaver and the Wyvern to do anything about. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Ajit trying to not mess around, pops the Eclipse, but Monkey's able to charge away, and that's going to be the ultimate on cooldown for a good couple of minutes. Yeah, that's really big when you can have that ulti come out, and now you've got two minutes where you don't have to worry about it. If you go diving for a kill in mid or at top, there's no threat of a Luna TP in with Eclipse. She could theoretically TP in with a Lucent Beam. She's going aggressive bottom, and yeah, no escape for Z-Freak. Easy setup and kill there. Yeah, they may not have been able to take down Monkeys, but uh, good rotations from WG. Yeah. And overall, this early game's been really solid for the two WG carries, like the mid and the, and the safe lane farmer. Uh, both of them are top of the side as overall net worth goes, and it's only really the supports who are perhaps a bit on the poorer side. WG Uni, despite giving up the kills, it managed to outlane complexity. Absolutely. I mean, you can just tell that by looking at the CS of the Omni Knight. He's, he's nearly got the same as Mu. It's 31 uh, at this stage of the game. The, the farm that he's found on this off lane, uh, considering the fact that he was taken down twice, is pretty remarkable. Yeah, and now he's level 6, so he's got Purification, Repel, a point in DJ, and he can throw, he's saving a skill point in case he needs an ultimate for some kind of situation. This is where WG Uni get very scary if they're grouping up to push towers. Ideally, they group up as three or four and uh, tr still may try to maintain this farming efficiency that is giving them the advantage over complexity. And mid lane, just Nana playing incredibly aggressively, making sure to keep Cancel in his place. One of the maybe limitations of Cold Strap, they're very magic damage heavy, which is normally good against the Timber, but we could very easily see, I mean, Nana's got the raindrops, could just rush the straight hood, and then he gets very tanky and hard to kill. Mid lane. Council trying to play his way out of this. Has got the Moonlight Shadow, they've dropped down a sentry. Not enough follow control to, to bring down the Marana, so Council will be okay. Yeah. Showing respect to the potential for ro rotation from some of the, uh, the dire supports there as well. Never know when that charge is coming in. Speaking of charge, Monkeys has that with the Nether Strike. He's hit level 6, so his threat for ganking gets that much scarier. And one thing we've got to consider is well, when the team fights do, can, do begin in, in a full scale, as you said, this Timbersaw is going to be hard to kill. 
And just the backup that they've got, the defensive capabilities, you've got an SD there for the saves, an Omni for the saves, you're going to have the Kunkas rum on you as well. It, it could be incredibly hard for Complexity to find those quick pickoffs with the, with the magical damage that they've got when the team fights do start. Yeah, we'll likely have to see someone even rush a defusal earlier than they would like to. Bottom, no, firing up our jet. We're going to come in for a couple of uh, attacks. Monkeys is going to hold back. Look for the ultimate to set up onto Luna. Luna falling low. Needs some sort of help. Is she going to get in time? She's not Arjit to fall. Arfu trying to turn around with the Xbox Toro combo onto Monkeys with the rotation from Nana. They'll take down the Spirit Breaker. Arfu falling low here to the Pulse Nova, but he's got the Repel. Will start to walk it off the right click from Cancel. One more as he jumps forward. Will find another. It's three for one at the moment here. Complexity coming out on top. Now I choked out by Cancel, but it's not going to connect. Kangaroo Nana forced back, and Cole will take the trade there. Three for one. Both teams bringing everyone down to the bottom lane for that fight. Yeah, and the most important thing is Complexity were there before the, the aggression even came. Mu was hiding in the trees, ready for the dive. And it's important to have to kind of anticipate your opponent's movements rather than react to them. If you react to that aggression by TPing in with two or three heroes starting with the Weaver, you're not going to, be able to get those kills. But because Mu is already there, throws the swarm immediately as the next TP comes, Complexity got the numbers advantage and Mu was able to chase down, get the initial kill on Luna, and then even get the Shadow Demon in the back line. So great decision making from him to be ready before the aggression even came. And a couple of different calls being made here by the side of Warriors Gaming. Off the back of losing the fight, still want to make use of the fact that they've got the majority down here and, and are looking to take a tier one, but at the same time, complexity, they're farming up in all lanes, pressuring the mid tier one themselves. We'll see who's able to get a favorable trade. Warriors Gaming will finish off the tower bottom, mid lane. We'll start to TP over to look to defend it. Arfu with the eyes onto Swindles. Eyes not able to get the vision for the X mark. Tries for a blind torrent. That won't connect. So the X marks bringing him back into Kangaroo's arms. And also more coming across, but cancel. Just post the Moonlight Shadow, make sure that Swindles can flap his way back to safety. Yeah, we'll get Swindles out first. It's a pretty long cooldown to be using charge. Coming in mid now from Monkeys. They want to go, but Kang is a difficult kill. They want to secure this mid tower. This is it could be messy. There's a fair few members of WG towards the mid, and indeed Mon Monkeys holds off. It was a nice attempt, you know, as we saw, they used the Moonlight defensively, but Cole said we can maybe try and use this against them and surprise them with an attack. And now bottom lane complexity, they see heroes mid, they're immediately pushing again. This is something that Winter mentioned, Leshrac has over other supports, his pushing power, and we're seeing it here. That was a full HP tier 1, Zetrick just swoops in with a level 3 edict and it's gone took no time whatsoever. That's a big punish from Complexity. WG getting really put back in their place for five manning a bit too much. We saw them five man it. And bottom now they're over towards the mid lane and that's kind of how you want to play against this is make sure you're getting more on the other lanes away from WG Uni and then at the, like if you've got everything in place then you defend. But if not you go for that split push play. Absolutely. And at this stage of the game you've got the pushing power of a Luna but on a support hero. So Trades are going to favor your way if you find the opening to do so. And we can see mid already just pushing onto the tier two. And Z Freak isn't stopping. Yeah, again, he's got the level four edict this time. He's a little bit scared uh, seeing a few heroes missing on the map, knowing he's very squishy and will back off. But that was some good damage onto that tier, tier two as well as the tier one bottom. On mid lane, Complexity. We'll finish off the tier one mid. X Nova and Arfu coming in for the defense. And already around the back of the Kangaroo comes in with a purification. Burst down. Monkey's low. Mu will get brought back here by the X Mark. Sentry was down, but nothing to follow through on it. They will get the disruption, Soul Catcher. Onto Swindles, and Swindles just melts there. It's the burst of Warriors Gaming. The rest of Complexity just looking to get themselves back out to safety. Z Free. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Staying yeah. adamant on this bottom lane. We'll get uh, the tier two oh. down to half health nearly. Decent damage, Dale. He forced out the, the re glyph as well. So the tier one mid tower reset the glyph, and then he immediately gets it out once more. So now they know if they go for another push or he finds himself in that position to play the split push game, there's no glyph to worry about. Monkeys. That's onto Arfu. He does have an ult as well, as well as the back of a council. They'll hit the arrow. Council coming in close and personal and great control and play from the two of them to take down a free kill and allow the pressure to continue on the tier two down bottom. Meanwhile though, Warriors Gaming working on the tier one mid. Swindle's gonna come across and try and use the splinter blast to hold them back. We'll see if they get this one done, and we'll also see if Complexity are able to finish off that push down bottom at the same time. As, as we can see, the Warriors Gaming committing the more resources for in the mid lane here for this push. Complexity just seems to be pushing faster because of the Edict. Like, Luna's one of those heroes who takes items before she becomes a real pushing threat, and we're just seeing just the Dragonlance treads for now. I mean, this is not an underfarmed Luna by any means. It's more the fact Luna takes more time, needs two, three big items, needs like a Manta, uh, needs more items on top of like on top of this to really threaten buildings. And Edict, you don't need items. Level 4 Edict pushes the same at any stage of the game. So we're seeing Complexity really 
thread in the WG Unity side of the map, and they've managed to get some nice deep boards into that Radiant jungle to perhaps set up some later kills as well. So WG regaining the control though. Bottom lane is, is no longer being pressured upon by Complexity. The rest of the map starting to open back up for the team. It's complete on Nana, working towards his next item, as we saw it on Cancel. Point boosting, I believe, has got about 2k nearly on top of that. Okay, just 1k at the moment, so still a bit of time before we are going to see the Ags come out. And the cores for both teams very even on farm. You look at the Weave of the Luna, they're almost identical. The Timber, the Moran, it's a small edge going the Timber's way. Uh, and Luna has got one Ancient Sack there, but hasn't got the Helm of the Dominator, so it's purely relying on supports or heroes to be in the neighborhood to get those stacks going. And that's something which Luna just hasn't had the farm to fall back on because they've been 5 main they haven't been prioritizing the farming Ooh, efficiency. Top lane Swindle's just dropping a Winter's Curse immediately onto the Omni Knight, allowing Seafreak to finish off the tower. He's running in. And they're, they're gonna Moonlight get the hell out. There's Seafreak? no detection on WG, and he's gonna be able to ward this one off. Runs forwards through them and out of there. Well, okay. What happens when you have those sentry wards, and that's something kind of mentioned earlier, the supports for WG Uni very, very poor because they have to keep purchasing all this detection. The vision game becomes so important, and that's where complexity at the invis of the Weaver as well as that Moonlight Shadow, which is denting that for WG Unity econ economy. Uh, Z-Freak, of course, working for that. You all set as of next, no, no. Heading across, but again, no catch. They they do get the D-Wall by the looks of it, WG over that. That uh, into the Rage in Ancients area, mid lane, Swindles, and Council. I am Nana, they do have a DD on the Marana at the moment. Uh, turn around onto Z Freak though, quickly to hold it back. Nana moving in incredibly aggressively with the Chakra. Uh, actually, a little low on the mana front, and now Cole looking for the turnaround. Uh, looking for the Nether Strike, but the Torrent will hold back Monkeys and Z Freak. Z Freak falling incredibly low. X Mark back into the Timber Chain, and Nana, that's going to be one down on Cole and WG Unity. They're not done yet. Moving out onto Council, they'll take down a second. And not a lot of complexity you can do to hold that one back there. Warriors Gaming just running straight down the middle and Colin able to hold them. Boy, this is, we're kind of past that point where complexity can 5v5 fight. They made a good hold at bottom because they had Weaver in a good position and they caught WG by surprise. But if WG are ready with five heroes, you don't want to 5v5 into the Omni Knight. He's got level four purification. The two points in Repel is more than enough. And Nana on the front lines, 1200 HP, reactive armor and the hood. Swindles, again, oh, a little bit of looking a, for. a questionable curse there. It's not going to get any achie anything achieved yeah. with that one as, as WG just remain in position and hammer down onto the tier 2. Really hoping to get that Luna to be attacking the Omni in that curse, but every time they see Swindles moving forward, Arjit repositions further away. And more money in the bank for WG as they take the tower. They do get the X mark into the torrent, back onto Moonlight. They got the control to bring down. Yes, they do! Just that little mini stun there with the Lucid Beam holding him back so he can't get the time lapse out. That's very it, nicely timed. That's such a big kill to get as well. They'd already taken the T2 tower, which was giving WG Unity a ton of momentum and a bit of a gold advantage. And now with that kill, it's a high va value target as well as another follow up tower. They're going to get this T2 top tower uncontested, no trade in sight. Complexity immediately drew lines down this bottom line, basically saying, hey, we've got to push out this bottom lane. We need to start, start going back to what was working, which was threatening to split push when Z Freak was doing damage to the tier two bottom when they're farming the enemy jungle where it's much safer to be right now they need to avoid wg as much as possible they're, they're going to really, tp really back he buys a mech and he's been x back in this is going to be a mech high ground push. this push is going to be very very scary for complexity to try and deal with they've even got a pipe they've port. got it already here oh, wg Nana. well have they got the damage is the question they've got level four disruption lunar illusions if this tower goes down then the bouncing glaives will potentially destroy them level four bouncing glaives six bounces per attack you've got to defend this tower you can't let it get to the racks you've got to do something a monkeys trying to have a bit of an opening just to charge onto nana that can usually pop by kang nana stays firm here up on the high ground they look at the x mark torrent combo once more onto move putting him back to the top arrow flies through isn't going to connect from cancel He's heading back over, still just 500 short of that Aghanim, something that is desperately needed for defenses like this, but at this stage, with the pipe on, oh, Nana, you could ask yourself how much that would actually change things, and Nana, who's in aggressively, Monkeys caught in the turret, the boat flying for as well, Monkeys is down, 30 seconds out on the sidelines in complexity, they're going to have to hold this one 4v5, they pipe is available, but... Yeah, they oh, move, getting incredibly close to death, they do get the arrow connection onto Kunkka, but the repels there from Kang, and the follow-up physical damage is just not there at the moment from Complexity's lineup. They've lost a tier three, and what is gaming? I mean, the they're not showing any insane. sign of, of leaving anytime soon. They're going to remain in this yeah. position. 
and continue to push onto the racks. It just they fall the 19 minute mark here. Nana doesn't even have to use his pipe. He's holding it for a fight, but complexity, uh, they, they don't want to engage. They've hit an arrow. Luna is this go time. It is a good arrow, but again, they don't the follow go. up is so hard to commit. But Kangri just sitting on the back line, throwing out the repels and the purification. Swindles himself getting cut down incredibly short. Nana going in deep, has to put the pipe to keep himself alive. Arjit though, comes in with the Eclipse, forces Complexity to back up. That's, that's the ulties, but they're going to get at least a range racks and then they're going to back off likely. Here we go again, Arrow into the charge. Repel again from Kangri, Cancel making it so line. hard for Complexity to commit onto one target. Warriors Gaming now starting to back up, Moot chasing down Arfu. Jumped up in the air, Cancel's going to be dropped though. The first casualty on Cole, Z Freak to fall as well, double kill. For Arjit. There'll be a Winter's Curse coming out to Kangaroo, but the damage during it isn't enough to bring him down. WG move forward for more. Take a third. Nana now on a killing spree, and it really feels like Complexity's draft just hasn't got it in it to, to hold back this push at this yeah. early of a stage. They picked the Winter Wyvern to try and deal with his pushes. It's not the Winter Wyvern that's failing so much. It's the rest of the draft. Something also mentioned was the Spirit Breaker. You can't charge into this team. There's a Torrent, there's a Boat, there's a Timbersaur. I mean, all these heroes basically make the Spirit Breaker an irrelevant hero. Monkeys has played a great game. He contested that offlane so well, but his hero cannot fight into the WG Unity draft. And now it is a 20 minute top Rex claimed as complexity have their work cut out for them. They just hit this perfect timing where it wasn't like any of this, oh, let's get Roshan and then we go for the push. WG's like, no, we, we go now. We just took the last tier two towers. We've had just been picked off. They felt like they were strong with the mech plus pipe. These items are really good when you first get them in this mid game stage. You don't want to just drag the game and go late with these kind of pickups. And boy, did WG Uni punish complexity there. Absolutely. It just feels like the timings haven't been there for Cole. Go going back down to the mid lane start off, the fact the cancel fell behind and still 20 minutes in trying to finish off that Aghanim Scepter because of the lack of farm in the early game. And then of course Moo still desperately trying to finish off that Diffusal Blade. Something that might be able to, to allow Cole to, to get these defensives successfully. They need to somehow take down the target without having to worry about Kangaroo backing him up. Yeah, that's the biggest reason why that Rex went down without a fly. It kind of looks like, oh, why Complexity is giving up a Rex without fighting? Well, the only way to fight is to jump one here and burst them down, but that's just not possible versus Omni Knight. That's what Omni Knight gave this draft, that ability to prevent that single target burst damage. Not just the Omni Knight, but the Shadow Demon disruption to save. They've got this great saving potential and the damage negation coming from the Kunkers ghost ship, the run there. So the possibility to burst down one target just isn't there. They still haven't got the Ag Scepter quite yet completed on cancel. And because of this, until they get this defusal, Complexity just kind of have to avoid fights. And even with the defusal, it's still very tricky playing around all the heals because it's not just the Repel or the Guardian Angel. It's the fact there's this heal as well as Shadow Demon Disruption to keep people alive. Another tier two into the pocket of WG. Nana now with the Bloodstone. You really cannot afford to lose team fights now against this lineup. If he starts to rack up the Bloodstone charges, he's going to be nigh on unkillable for Complexity. And that tier three push coming in. At the same time, it looks like Cole, they're just trying to go for a bit of rap. You've got two yeah. heroes up at the top, Z-Freak and Mu, the best pushes they've got on their lineup, trying to do something in return. Monkeys charging forward, trying to slow down this push of WG to allow his teammates to get something down that bottom, but the combo's there from Kunker, bringing down Monkeys. The racks are exposed, and WG, they continue to push Z-Freak and Mu. They may finally back up, indeed. It looks like Z-Freak... He's going to remain there. Moo's already headed back to try and help out with this defense, but they're losing the bottom racks. And at 22 and a half minutes in, Complexity losing two sets of racks against WG. Yeah, Nano TP back just in time to make sure, okay, we're not going to lose a racks for this. We'll give you a tier three tower for, our, for taking your racks, but you will not trade racks with us. WG Unity, make sure they leave the pushing Luna and then get back and defend. That gives them a monstrumental lead here. Two lanes of racks at 23 minutes in. They line up scales going into the late game. Timber, Luna, these heroes just shot. What? <laughs> Luna, excuse you? I think he, You're I, not he's messing ahead, about. <laughs> That's not how you build BK, me. <laughs> oh, maybe in Southeast Asia. Maybe in there, sir. So I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Not here in Boston. Well, no, we have a very, very stacked looking curry there. Glimmer Cape uh, coming out. BKB, Yules yeah, for for the members of WG that, Unity. That's really the scariest part about losing two lanes of Rex this early yeah. on is the amount of money you get for it. And, and Cole, this is the kind of move. plays you've got to do. It, but knew it's, it was coming. It's <laughs> not up to a good start. And immediately WG smoke up themselves. They want to try and get the jump on Cole. And they may just get it here with this wraparound. We'll see if Complexity are ready for this one. Still under the cover, a bit of smoke, some of the members. A Warriors game, and they may just they say, just screw the smoke. Ground, yeah. We'll just push in your base and look for mega creeps. I mean, mid lane. 
Three wave already pushing up to the high ground. They need a big Winter's Curse on someone like an Omni Knight to burst him down. They need an absolutely massive Winter's Curse. Followed up with like a Split Earth or an Arrow to chain stun and get the kill, but... Even if you try chain stun the Omni Knight, then the Shadow Demon could repel and save him. Very difficult to get that kill. That's gonna have to be an incredible hold, and oh, the start off here, it's not too great. Winner's Curse into Arj, it doesn't achieve much at all, and already the combo coming and catching out Z-Freak and Swindles with the GA, allowing Wings Gaming, Gaming to move in for more. They've not only just found one, they forced out the buyback immediately from Z-Freak, Moo trying to draw them out to the back, but the Purification Burst brings down the bug, and Moo does not have buyback here. 24 minutes in, complexity getting absolutely battered at this stage, running back to the base, back to the fountain. 14 to 7, Z Freak to die back as well. He's down for a full minute. And this game, it's, it's over, all over. Yeah. GG, Cold Tap out. And Warriors Gaming, 25. An absolute clinical performance from there from start to finish. Complexity did have a little bit of an up in the at the beginning. They were finding the ganks, but the farm, Warriors Game just out farming them from the start. They managed to find the timing. As soon as there was that 20 minute push up top where they got the racks, it kind of felt like Warriors Gaming said to each other, hey, we've got this, we can push, and there's nothing that Cole can do to stop it. Yeah.